Hello everyone, it's Dawn. Welcome back. Um, I've got a few things going on, and as you can see here, I'm going to talk about this one first. Um, because I am taking a bit of a break from blooming because um, it doesn't seem to be cooperating well with this summer weather here in Vegas, um, I've kind of started to explore other things that I can do that I know will work or I think that will work. Um, so let's get right into it. This is going to be multi-part. I'm not sure if it's going to be three or four parts uh, or more or less, whichever. Um, but um, just let's just have some fun. Let's do something different. Let's explore the world of fluid art. So as you can see here, I've got a frame this isn't one that I built. This is just a canvas frame that I cut the canvas off from. Um, I was, uh, the premise of what I'm doing actually um, was I was exploring doing something with my old large format canvases that I've already painted. I didn't like them. They didn't come out. Something happened. Trying to do something with that canvas. Um, because of the pouring mediums that I've used, um, it really is limited as to what will actually work because if you bend or try to sew, hint, hint, um, on a standard acrylic pour, the paint cracks, splits, peels away from the canvas. It doesn't bond into the canvas like I need it to. That being said, creating a pouring medium of fabric medium and acrylic paint does work because it does bond to the canvas. So I kept this. This is, I think, a 16 by 24, it looks like, maybe. Um, so I kept this, and I modified it to work better and be reusable. So... What I've got here, there, as you know, there is kind of a routed out lip that holds your canvas up off from the inside of the frame material, which makes it suitable for installing a, um, a support barrier that will support the lightweight canvas you're going to use. What I'm doing is experimenting with different fluid art techniques on canvas to create fluid art fabric. Um, and I will say, as you can see here, this is already painted on. I've already tried it. It is working. So um, what I did was I got another big piece of um, acrylic from Hobby Lobby. This comes in a two foot by three foot sheet. And um, it's very flexible, it's quite thin, it's maybe a millimeter thick, but it does hold up, it is sturdy. So I cut a piece to fit inside of this frame, and then I took some duct tape and just taped it in place, and when I did that, I also, get that out of the way, I also wrapped down around the edge of the frame to protect the wood so that this would be reusable. That created a, um, a painting surface that is supported so that I don't have to staple my canvas in place. I can just use push pins just basically to reattach it. So I've cut up a, a raw piece of medium weight unbleached canvas. Um, I've left myself a couple of inches on each edge so that I can wrap around and attach it. Um, the, the push pins are just your regular fluid art push pins, the smaller version, not the giant ones, because those are really hard to push in. Uh, so basically, you're just going to wrap the corners kind of neat, just like that. So the first one's the easy one, and then tack it in place with a push pin. And then when you get to the next corner, you're going to give it a little bit of a tug just to stretch that canvas a little bit. And make another neat little corner. 
and hold it in place with a push pin. When you do the other sides, you're kind of pulling around as you go. So I'm going to pull away from myself to give that a little stretch and make another neat corner. The last corner is not going to be quite so neat because you have to pull in two directions. And this is why you don't need to pull it, one of the reasons why you don't need to pull it super tight. So I'm just going to kind of get that lined up and then pull a little bit in both directions. And like I said, this corner is not going to be as neat as the other three, but it works. And then just tack it in place. This is twofold. This gives you a, um, a lift to handle your canvas with once you paint it on it. Um, you can then use as many push pins as you feel you need just to, to smooth this out, get the wrinkles out of it. So I'm just going to pull a little bit, don't get crazy, because you will get, uh, you'll pull your fibers too much and it'll be wonky. And then same thing on the opposite side. As you know when stretching canvas, the traditional way, you're working, uh, you're always working on op opposing sides. And then it's always center to center. I'm not using staples, number one, because there are already some staples in this, and number two, they're beastly hard to get out once you put them in. And I don't want to crack this frame. I'd like to be able to reuse it as much as possible. And then you can sort of explore, oh, that one's a bit hard to get in. And they do all need to be all the way in so that your canvas isn't wonky, just like with a regular fluid art canvas. Um, so you can sort of take a look and see where you're at. And I'm seeing a little bit of wrinkling here on the short width. So I'm going to add additional push pins just in between each of these side ones. Just like that. And then flip it around and just smooth that out a little bit. You can use more if you feel like you need to. I don't and as long as there are no obvious ripples or wrinkles in the canvas, I'm happy with it. Ugh, these are hard to get in. There. Good enough. As long as they're basically in, it's good and not wonky. Got a little pink paint on there, a drip while I was thinning down my paints. Um, so, the purpose of the acrylic underneath is to support this. I've got a little bit of bounce in this canvas, but not a lot. I don't really need it. The acrylic is going to support this as it gets wet. Now, there are two different ways to prep this canvas. The first way is to do nothing. That's probably the best way to do so if you're if you're wanting a soft fabric, one that you can soften, and you're going to use actually two different types of fabric medium, depending on what you want to use that for. This one I want to be a little softer because I'm going to do something a little different with it. The first one I did, it's okay that it turned out quite stiff because I'm making something that needs to be stiff, a tote bag. So, um, when I did the first one, I used a primer. This is Folk Art Clear Primer for canvas for the purpose of fabric painting. This makes, this is sort of like a fabric gesso. Um, and it is supposed to soften as you heat set it, but it doesn't. It stays very crispy. Um, but that's good if you're making something like a tote bag or a duffel bag or something like that that needs to have some structure to it and some firmness. 
So I, on the first one I did, I applied two coats of this and let it dry. And I just used a, a big, wide, soft um, apple barrel brush, bigger than this one, and just kind of let it soak in. And then once that dried, didn't take very long, about an hour, I came back and went in the other direction. And that gives you, number one, some tooth to the, um, the surface. And it also, um, you can sand it lightly to smooth it out to get flow. I struggled with flow with what I was doing, so I had to change it up. Um, but this time I'm not going to use this primer. It isn't necessary, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it, it's actually pretty simple. It's because you're adding a fabric medium to all of your acrylic paint. Therefore, it's all bonding to the fabric. You're going to heat set it, and it's going to be permanent. So um, I'm not going to paint on this just yet. I'm waiting for my big bottle of GAC 900 to come. Um, I used the, the Tulip fabric medium, and I've used it before. I didn't like the properties of the finished paintwork. Um, it was very stiff and it didn't soften with heat setting. Um, GAC 900 I have used before and that does soften with heat setting. So you're going to experiment and I'm going to experiment with different brands of fabric medium to get the results that I'm looking for depending on what I'm using the fabric that I create for. So um, that's kind of the setup for this series. Um, if you have questions, drop them in the comments or hit me up on Facebook, Vegas Maniac Designs. Um, I can, um, you can uh, message me through Facebook if you choose to. Um, but what's really nice is you let this dry and it, it will stick a little bit in some areas depending on how much bleed through you get. I'm going to get a lot with this next one but it will peel right off from the acrylic. You don't want it to set too long, just enough to dry the paints and then pull it up and uh, lay it flat over a piece of plastic to finish drying. Otherwise it will stick. Um, I did have a little sticking with the first one that I did. So um, anyways, that is the setup. That's how you prep your, your canvas frame. <clears throat> and after this segment, I'm going to attach the, um, the kind of the sped up version of my painting for the next one. The following video after this one will be the actual uh, construction of the tote bag that I'm making so that you can see how I put it together, how I made the pattern, um, and then we'll go from there. So 